Welcome to Ball Talk Deep, where we talk deep about ball. It's Andrade and Irwin back at it again. And ladies and gentlemen, the NBA has officially dropped the Christmas Day schedule for 2021. And if you guys check out here, we've done a whole video talking about the good, the bad, the ugly of the entire schedule, talking about every matchup. But if you don't see already, that video is a little long. We get it, and as a small channel, that really doesn't help with people at least checking it out and giving it a shot. So I thought it'd be a good idea if we sh do a shorter version where we just talk about our criticism and critiques that we have for the schedule, focusing on two specific lineups, and that is the Celtics and Bucks matchup and the Jazz and uh, Mavs uh, matchup. The fact that I even forgot that it was the Mavs says a lot. Snooze um, fest! <laughs> But yeah, let's just get into it because we got a lot to say on both of what course. we believe the NBA sh could have, should have done, and what we would have done if we were in Adam Silver's shoes or in the committee's shoes. Because, uh, all right, let's just get okay, into it. We're man. about to so, go yeah, in. Man. Okay, man. We're, so I want to start it off. We want to start it off with the Mavs versus the Jazz. But before we get into that, I want to talk about a team that plays for the Western Conference because it is insulting. It is insulting. I am talking about the Nuggets. How the fuck, Adam Silver, do you leave the reigning MVP out of arguably one of the best days in the NBA nationwide? That everybody has their eyes on the NBA. And the NBA. Casuals, serious fans, even people that have nothing to do, that don't give a single fuck about basketball or the NBA are tuned in. Because the fan that's in that household during the, the holidays will be like, hey, turn the TV on. Or like, yo, I'm going to go watch the game. And the TV's on and whoever's in the room catches it. You know what I mean? And look, like, I, that happens to me all the time. And I wanna, like, they learn a little bit about the, about the game and the players and all that good look, stuff. And I would understand if, like, you know, if this was, if this guy had, like, no personality whatsoever. But this guy's nickname, The Joker. The Joker. What the fuck? I mean, and it like, became a whole thing just when the Joker was uh, like, leaving HBO Max. And yeah, man, that and he has a pretty good Chewbacca impression, so I fuck with that too. No, and, but the biggest thing is like and, Nikola Jokic is the first reigning MVP to not get a Christmas Day game since the NBA went to five games on Christmas in. 2008. And look, Andrade. 13 years, man. I would also understand, like, you know, if the Nuggets were a dumpster fire team as, like, you know, yes. like the Sacramento Kings. Oh, wait, my bad. They're no longer one. They're, they're summer league champions. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Uh, but the Nuggets are good, man. They're They've legit. been good for a little, They've been for a little bit. They've been title contenders and amongst the favorites for the past two years. Some even three. And so you, and you decide to slap them across the face and like, yeah. oh, Jamal Murray's injured. Hey, motherfucker! They still got to the second round. They still have uh, Aaron Gordon. They still have MBJ. Michael Porter Jr. They still got the Bo -bo. Sum Bo -bo. summer league legend <laughs> Bo Bo in that <laughs> roster as well. Legend. Come on, man! Like, yo, no, the joke. The Joker made like a joke about your mama or something, or do you have something against like you know like the Mile High City, bro? <laughs> I'm like, bro, come on, fix no, that shit. Facts. I don't, and maybe I don't know if traveling is a part of it. I honestly don't get it because nah, Nuggets man. are a legit team. They have star power. Maybe not the same mainstream star power that Luca might have for the Mavs, but like Jokic and Murray, come on. And MPJ is a rising star. It doesn't make and then Bobo is an internet favorite, a social media not only, gem. Not only that, Joker's and not only a superstar, but he's an international superstar. Like, yes, shit. He might not be on Lucas level, but he's he's, he's damn close. close. He's, yeah, and come on, if, let's bring it now. Let's tie it into the matchup, like Jazz versus Nuggets. How does that not make sense to put above Mavs versus Jazz as a whole across the board? Because both of them are top tier Western Conference team who, especially going into this season, are going to be amongst the favorite. Top four in the West, top five in the West that people are going to be like, okay, those are legitimate title contenders. Especially Jazz after last season. Like I already said, Nuggets in the past two years. Jokic coming in with his regular season MVP. Um, fucking Jazz coming in with a chip on their shoulder. And in the matchups, you got Murray versus Donovan. You got Jokic versus Gobert. You got, uh, I guess you can throw Conley versus MPJ. Like what doesn't and then even Gordon versus Gobert that that would be fun to watch too. Like I guess so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, shit, hey, I'll do a poster over Gobert. I'll, do, I'll, <laughs> I'll give him that. And then, and then look, if you want to even throw in ratings, Aaron Gordon is a known name, a slam dunk like legend. A lot of people think should have won. 
in the All Star Game. That guy's name is known now because of the, those that right. dunk championships. Uh, you know, Look, versus against Zach Levine. That's where I would disagree. So across the board, the Nuggets are like, you're gonna tell me Jokic, Murray, MPJ, Gordon, overall star power quality doesn't equate to Lucas. I would, okay, actually, that, that's arguable. No, that's I, arguable. no, no, that's arguable. But man. as a whole, I, I just I, think Nuggets versus Jazz just washes the Mavs out of the water. I would have preferred Mavs versus Nuggets because, okay, what the fuck man, come saying? on, man. Yo, man. What do you mean, man? We made an episode about this. Luka, Joker, Balkan Duel. Come yeah, on, but that's man. not enough. International nah, that's superstar not enough power, I love man, both of them. That's not enough. If Porzingis goes to a good start, you know, shit, that's another star you have over there. No, I well, know. Man. I'm but, oh, and just to give a heads up, guys, before we start shitting on the Mavs, we're both Luka fans. I love Luka Doncic. He's part of my quote-unquote boys crew. And I like the Mavs team that they got going on. And look, I like the Jazz. Unlike this guy over here, man, I was a believer in the Jazz that they can make it to the finals. And when it comes to my boys crew, Spider Mitch is right up there. That's you true. You know, when it comes to that. So these critiques are coming, like, as objective as possible. But now it honestly feels like this is one of those blatant uh, feelings for me where it, it legit... The NBA feels like they're stuffing Luka and the Mavs down our throats. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they could have scheduled it different. Or I would have at least waited another year to bring Luka in into the Christmas Day schedule. I know he's a very well-known star now. Like, he's very well-known. But past two years, two first-round exits. And then in the Olympics, couldn't even get the bronze after lifting his team up for so long. But he couldn't even get the, the bronze medal. Hey, bro, not every Olympic team, man, has like 10 <laughs> all-stars in the but fucking But the lineup. Nuggets were at least in the Western Conference Finals uh, two years ago. Yeah. Like, it, come on, guys. All right. And that's that. Let's move on to the next one. Celtics versus Bucks. Look. Woo! Yeah, man. A talk lot about, to say about this. Even about, Twitter's talk, got a lot to say yeah, about man, this like, one. Yeah, man. Like, talk about like trying to shove like you know the Celtics and like Jason Tatum like you know up in our face. No disrespect. And look, I understand the Celtics, one of the most iconic franchises in the NBA. I think that's the, the um, reason they might be doing uh, this. And look, fun fact: I know the Celtics were one of the first teams to integrate African American players in the '60s. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to that, respect when it comes to that as well. But facts are facts. No, they got yeah. the history. But yeah. these Christmas games yeah. are based on the now, the yes. present. And look, the and now. a little bit of the future. The now, right now, is the Celtics are a team that, are on, that, are, that got worse from last year. Jaden Brown, he is injured. I'm not sure if he's going to be at 100% back in mm -hmm. Christmas. They lost Evan Fournier. They lost Kemba Walker. Even though Celtics fans are going to tell me, hey, uh, addition from subtraction. It is what it is. They got worse. And look, I got a better candidate to be able to face off the returning champs um, compared to the Celtics. Who do you think I have in mind? Everybody knows. Like, everybody has Anybody with common sense with a fucking pulse, they're going to say whether you love them or hate them, the Miami Heat. Yeah. How the fuck do you leave them out? They have a very well-known rivalry at this point. Past two years, back and forth. He took the first one, made it to the finals. Bucks to the second one, won a championship. So now both of them are proving to be, in terms of results, the top two teams of those past two years. And now the third one, this would have been that three P, that third meetup. And if, because you don't know if they might meet in the playoffs, even though I think it's a good they were chance. In the second round. And this would have been at the very least to lead up to that. And then if they do meet in the playoffs, this would have been a nice little. Uh, train to keep hyping up their playoff series meetup down the line. But if not, at the very least, least give us a Christmas Day matchup. And then there's a lot more going into the narrative. Of course, which I want to get into it. Wait, look, in the bubble, when the Heat kicked the fucking Bucks' ass in five games, what did the Bucks did in the offseason? They retooled. They traded for Drew Holiday. They got Bobby Portis. Yeah. They, they got P.J. And Tucker. this offseason... The Heat did the same thing. Exactly. We got our asses kicked. Massacre. You know, Massacre. To, yeah. Uh, in, four, now, in four games, we got Kyle Lowry. Kept Duncan. Kept Duncan. We got... Uh, Markeith Morris. Markeith Morris. Uh, and we took P.J. Tucker from the books. Yeah. Took because they wanted Tucker back until talks got soured. So that's another little layer of narrative you want to add to this rivalry and tension that would have hyped up the game. Exactly. And then yes, to man. see how Tucker would have matched up against... Giannis or anyone else on that squad and he knows the ins and out of that team because he literally just won a championship with them There's just so much that goes into it I just I want a logical reason on why and also the heat are a very relevant franchise very relevant They bring star power. They bring ratings. So 
I think it's very arguable that and they're, and they're, the Celtics and the Heat, like who brings more? If they if one doesn't bring that much more than the other, at the very least they're equated. And if they're equated like on similar levels in terms of bringing uh, viewers, then come on, man. Like in yeah, man, it's still rivalry. Come it on, just man. makes more sense. That's gonna garner more eyeballs. That's gonna get more hype. Exactly, man. Like what the fuck have the Celtics done since two thousand eight? Tell me. Oh man, this guy. Exactly. But like how I many, said, how many... I think it's because they were able to get now the Knicks, the Celtics, and the Lakers on the Christmas Day schedule for the first time in who knows how long. And those are the NBA's top three most valuable franchises, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And I think that might be kind of like the force of Luca, the Luca thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's about it. I do want to say for also Jazz and Mavs. I also think if not the Mavs. The Clippers, I think the Clippers and nah. Jazz, just like I I brought up the postseason uh, tension that the Bucks and Heat have had the past two years. No Kawhi, Clippers no brought, Christmas. brought their shit towards the Jazz this postseason. No Kawhi, and, no right, Christmas. No Kawhi. PG brought that without Kawhi and created one of the arguably one of the uh, more funner series in the entire postseason that just passed. So it just doesn't make sense to me when we're looking back in recent history, very recent history why neither of them were chosen above the Mavs to play against the Jazz and also why the Heat weren't chosen above the Celtics to play the Bucks. It's very simple. Give me logical points for that, Adam Silver or committee, NBA PR communications. I don't care. Give us logical reasons on why these matchups happen. I want, like, for real. Like, I don't care if it's, as long as it's unbiased and and non-subjective, I'm cool with it. Very simple. Luka, PG. No, that's easy. Come but on, that's man. why the Nuggets and the Jazz. But the fact that I can think of two matchups that are much more relevant that I would want to see, I think a lot of other NBA fans would want to see, makes more sense. Like, yeah, because we how we touched in the other video, Hawks versus Knicks. That this matchup got exciting based off one playoff series last year. Same thing could have happened with the Clippers and Jazz. But whatever. Hey, whatever. And last thing I want to throw in the reason I'm wearing this hat is Yo Nike. Please, please. Last criticism. Bring back Christmas designs. In the NBA, for the love of God, Adidas was able to do it. Yo, if Adidas did it, you you can do it. And you guys kill it with the City Edition. Go check out City uh, Edition video series on that. Y'all kill it. People love that. People love when we do that series. Yep. Do it with Christmas style. It's so fresh, like, and we like that as fans. Yeah, and it real. should bring you more money. Well, what more, more do I need to say? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> uh, hire us as consultants. But um, either way, guys, uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Do you guys love the matchups? Do you guys hate the matchups? Do you guys don't give a shit about the matchups? Yeah. Like, do you guys any- agree with which one we think should have replaced the other two? Exactly. Or do you guys actually like one or the other or both of them about or who our you, recommendations? Or who would you add? The second, yeah, maybe something we didn't bring up. The Sacramento Kings. What? <laughs> <laughs> the summer league. Why you shitting on the Sacramento Summer, Kings summer league so champs, bro. Hey, don't uh-huh. sleep on them, bro. Um, but either way, man, appreciate all the love and the hate. You guys already know Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all podcast streaming platforms. Or before I end it over here, eighty five percent of y'all is going down. Um, are, are, Let's are, keep that going down. Yeah, you know, um, are not are watching are not subscribed. Do something about it. All I want for Christmas is for that number to go down. And for our subscribe members, numbers to go up. Exactly. Who we knows? We can get to a thousand, we maybe might go, five thousand by Christmas. We might go streaking. I Something. Know. I don't know. I'll I don't do know. anything. I don't know. That's <laughs> it, man. Sorry, souls. What? Uh, <laughs> nah, not that. Either way, we'll catch you guys soon. For now. Take Later. care.